the Life Stories Family Heritage Project. And with me in the studio is the founder, Lisa Chayat, to tell us about what seems to me to be an extraordinary event or story. Uh, Lisa, tell me a little bit about how this came about in the first place. Yeah, well, thank you. Firstly, thank you for having me here. Um, it's 18... a pleasure to have you here. Thank I you. Thank you. Eighteen years ago, I interviewed my grandfather, Jacob Spilkin, just because. Uh, he was a wonderful raconteur, and I got a professional videographer, a friend of mine, Sean O'Sullivan, to film him. And we sat in my parents' lounge, and he spoke for an hour. And he told all the stories that he told us. I was about, well, I don't know, certain age <laughs> at that time. But he told us, and he told my mom and her brother for years. And it was a remarkable record of a man's life. He was 88 at the time, and he died, 90, uh, he died at the age of 94, which was 11 years ago. And for some reason, a couple of months back, I realized the power of YouTube, particularly to store family memory. Mm -hmm. And so I put his interview online. And my dad, I, I edited it down. It was a rough interview, and I put it online and into different sections with little descriptions and tag words. My dad said to me, Lisa, you've been interviewing people your whole life. Why don't you do this properly and have clients and give people the support of a, of a, of a memory in DVD form and also online so family and friends around the world can see it anywhere, anytime. And so that's what I started to do. And slowly but surely, I've been filming people. I've done eight amazing stories already and going on to our ninth. Uh, on a website uh, and also in pure DVD form. And it's an interview of a person's life. Anybody, it could be someone who's 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, or even 102. <laughs> it's a lovely, lovely idea, yes. Lisa. And what, how do people, it, it must be also very emotional for you and for the people doing this because they are, in a sense, doing something for posterity, aren't they? I think it's emotional in the sense that people feel that this is something of great value. Um, it's a simple interview. Oh. Um, people partner with me on it entirely. I'm a journalist by training, so of course I want to delve into certain areas, but they're my clients, and so people will say, look, I want to go here, or I don't, and this is the legacy that I want to leave. And it's very emotional, especially for me, I go onto the website and have a look at my granddad, who's not here anymore. The web can be used as a tool which has absolutely never been thought of before and it's got endless possibilities and this is now there forever, isn't it? It is. It's there forever. YouTube's extraordinary. There are amazing things. I found stuff on YouTube. I read a book and I love the author and I go straight there to see him or her speaking. YouTube is very, 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 very powerful. So parents just need to monitor what people are watching. Mm. But uh, people don't have to have it online. I just encourage that because I do believe that that's the best way. It's the best archive. And we're in Web 2 now, I guess, and Web three will come and four and five. People move houses, they lose things, they lose photographs, they lose documents, um, and they lose DVDs or videos or VHS or even beta cam tapes mm. that were made years gone by. This is a storage facility that people around the world can see, and I, I think it's a great way to go in terms of preserving family memory and heritage. Who comes to you? Just anybody? Uh, do you, is business interested, for example, or is it purely private individuals? Well, it's anybody. I mean, we're only about three months old, so um, it's been some Sons and daughters in their sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, and also people themselves. Um, I approach certain people and say, look, this is what I'm doing, and they say, this is great. People who are retiring, anniversary gifts, birthday gifts, I do couples, the whole thing. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's um, someone who or family who believes that it's worth preserving memory. And it's wonderful. It's great fun. But now the other thing, if it's on YouTube, you encourage people to put it on the Internet. What happens um, if uh, a lot of people might not want it to be that public, that yes. any Tom, Dick and Harry can have a look at it? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Very important question. So um, people firstly have the option of whether they want to put it online or not. You may just want to have your DVD. If you go online, um, you're able to have it on YouTube, which is, well, it's not on YouTube, it's actually on the website, which I'll give in a moment, but I embed it onto YouTube and then put it on my site. You're able to have it open to everybody on your special page, which I encourage because it's beautiful. Many stories have um, um, uh, data that's very interesting for the public for the public record and people who are researching online about things that may cross over into your story or stories that you particularly about the war about coming to South Africa about South Africa during the apartheid years the early years so there you go you can also have it encoded so that only certain people that you elect or who you give the code to will be able to watch it so we've covered all bases Rodney what sort of what sort of
sort of uh, duration is this, or does it depend on the family and the individual? Are you talking about a 10-minute video, or are you talking about a half-hour DVD, or what? What I encourage is 35 to 40, 45 minutes tops. I think people's attention span, even for family members, is getting shorter and shorter, and you want people to watch it. And if you're the youngsters, you really want them to. So in terms of the pure interview, I look at 35 to 45 minutes, and then I break those down, even on the DVD and on the online site, into six to seven-minute clips, so that people are engaged, and each has a description talking about early years or whatever it is yes. so people can choose episodes and 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 dip in there and you just very click, modern <laughs> it's very modern <laughs> yes. you just click on the the photograph because you're showing me the website here and it yeah. looks it looks very neat and easy to navigate with those pictures that's a 102 year old woman isn't it yes diary um, yes and you just click on it and she starts talking she starts to speak it's a it's a photograph that starts to talk <laughs> just like when you look at old pictures of your family in years gone by imagine guys you just clickety click and they start to speak about their yeah. lives we're feeling all emotional. Here. I'd you? love to hear my my <laughs> favourite grandmother speaking again because she had a unique voice as well. Um, but um, Lisa, how do you how do people contact you? Yeah. Tell me about the website. And all um, that. The, this is the this is the number of the website. It's www.lifestories.co.za. Lifestories.co.za. All my details are there. Telephone numbers, cell phone number, the whole thing. It's best to go. I'll give my cell as well, if you like. Yes, it's, why not? Okay. I know it's difficult for people to write so quickly, but here it is. 072-377-6211. Okay, repeat that. Okay, I'll do the website again. It's www.lifestories. It's plural, lifestories.co.za. And I'm Lisa Chiat. And my cell phone number is 072-377-6211. There you go. <laughs> and no more sort of bent and uh, curly sepia photographs that have faded after the years because now it's all going to be in crisp digital quality. I love it. I think you should be my marketing manager. You did this so well. <laughs> uh, but you can hear Lisa's, in, uh, Lisa's enthusiasm, I'm sure. There. That's Lisa Chiat. And the Life Stories Family Heritage Project, you know, all about it now so uh, give Lisa a call and see if you can document some of your precious family memories